The Rhino These mammals are most famous for their characteristic horn, or horns, their thick, armor-like skin, and their huge, stocky build. Today, there are five species of rhino. These are the white and black rhinos found in Africa. The Indian rhino is found in India and Nepal, with one pair in Pakistan. The tiny population of just 60 Javan rhinos is restricted entirely to Yujung Kulon National Park in Java, and the Sumatran rhino, whose population numbers less than 300 in Sumatra and Borneo. No wild rhinos currently live in North America, but this wasn't always the case. In fact, it is thought that today's rhinos living in Africa and Asia had a common ancestor in America. Scientists believe that rhinos originated in North America before spreading across Eurasia and then into Africa. In America, the lineage of mammals that eventually evolved into rhinos had a common ancestor with today's tapirs. The name of this common ancestor was Hyracius. It was a hornless mammal with the hooves of a tapir and teeth of a rhino. It was about the size of a large dog. They lived across North America and Eurasia during the Eocene. Then, approximately 60 million years ago, the superfamily Rhinoceratidae diverged from tapirs, and scientists believe this divergence occurred in either Eurasia or North America. If it was in North America, then that is where the rhino lineage began. From this superfamily of rhino-like mammals, more than 100 species evolved and radiated across Africa, Eurasia, and North and Central America. Most of these species became extinct before the Pleistocene, more than two and a half million years ago. Nine species survived into the late Pleistocene and some beyond. Between the many species of prehistoric rhinos, there were significant differences in physical characteristics. Many of the ancient rhinos were actually hornless, and interestingly, there was one rhino native to North America, Menaceras, with two horns arranged side by side at the tip of its nose, rather than one in front of the other. The Rhinocerontidae was divided into three family groups, which included the Hyracodontidae, Eminodontini, and Rhinocerontidae. The Hyracodontidae were horse-like animals that ranged in size, from that of a dog, to one of the largest mammals ever to have walked the earth. This giant, hornless rhinoceros was called Paraceratherium and stood at almost 5 meters or 16 feet tall at the shoulder. Its fossils have mostly been found across Eurasia, so this particular rhino-like animal was unlikely to have stepped foot on North American soil. The two other families included in the superfamily are the hippo-like Amenodontidae and Rhinoceratidae, from which all modern-day rhinos evolved. Fossils from these two families have been found across Eurasia and North America. Fossils of Amenodontidae have been found in Eastern Asia, Central Europe, and North America. Some members of this family were hippo-like in appearance and lived a semi-aquatic lifestyle, while others were mostly land-based, with a taper-like proboscis and small tusks which they used as a defense against predators and rivals. Within Rhinoceratidae, there were at least 26 different genera that inhabited Eurasia and North America. The ancestors of today's rhinos were some of the most widespread mammal groups in North America. They existed there for almost 40 million years. If we focus on just a couple of prehistoric rhinos, we can understand why they became extinct from North America. Two common genera roaming from Africa's Great Plains were the Teleocerus and the Philops. These animals lived on the continent 17 and a half to 5 million years ago. They were the last known genera of Rhinoceratidae to inhabit North America. Once they became extinct, there is no fossil evidence of Rhinoceratidae found in America. Teleocerus rhinos were similar in size and shaped to modern-day hippos, but lived on land. They grazed grasses and brush on the open plains. They had a small horn on the top of their nose and shorter legs than today's rhinos. Their fossils are commonly found throughout the Great Plains, and from these, scientists have had a glimpse into the social structure and behavior of these rhinos. The groups were predominantly female, 
with males dying at much younger ages. This was due to battles for mates and injuries that occurred from clashes. It is thought that they used their horn and tusk-like teeth to fight. Today, rhinos also fight in this way, inflicting injuries on rival males. The Aphelops was another rhino that also coexisted with Teleocerus in North America. From fossilized dentition and skull morphology, it has been assumed that they were more browsers rather than grazers. They had a prehensile upper lip, similar to today's black rhinos. This enabled them to pick up leaves from trees and shrubs rather than graze on grasses. They had longer limbs than other prehistoric rhinos, suggesting that it was good at running. It is often referred to as the running rhino. It is thought that they lived in herds, probably as a means of protection from predators, like many prey species today. So why did these two genera of prehistoric rhinos become extinct in North America? What happened to them? The answer lies in the food they ate. As the climate naturally changed, so too did the vegetation. These prehistoric rhinos grazed C3 plants. These were the predominant plant species found in North America at the time. The name C3 refers to the three carbon compounds produced during carbon fixation. This is a way in which plants utilize carbon to create energy in the form of carbohydrates. Even today, C3 plants are very common. They are most efficient in cool, wet climates. When the climate began to cool and precipitation reduced, the earth became drier. This happened approximately 17 to 14 million years ago during the mid-Miocene. These changes in environmental conditions resulted in a significant shift in the flora. C3 plants gave way to more advanced C4 plants. This flora was able to thrive on less rainfall and, even today, is less common, but still dominates grasslands where there is little rainfall. By 6.5 million years ago, these plants had expanded across the Great Plains. The herbivores that couldn't adapt to a change in their diet struggled to survive as the plant communities and vegetation structure altered. However, the two rhinoceros genera Teleocerus and Aphelops initially survived this ecological pressure. They were able to adapt their feeding behaviors and incorporate more C4 vegetation into their diets. Although their numbers declined to about 60% of previous populations, they slowly recovered. But 5 million years ago, their numbers declined once more. This time, they were unable to recover and did not survive. Whilst rhinos became extinct in North America, their relatives continued to live throughout Eurasia and Africa. 16 million years ago, the two African species split from the Asian rhinos. It is likely that they traveled down from Eurasia and settled in Africa. The Eurasian lineage gave rise to the Asian rhinos, which included extinct species like Merck's rhinoceros, as well as the more famous woolly rhinoceros. Interestingly, today's Sumatran rhino is the most closely related extant species to the woolly rhino. They diverged from a common ancestor 9.4 million years ago. The woolly rhinoceros was adapted to live in the cold, with its long shaggy fur, a trait that the Sumatran rhino has partly shared, as it has a thin layer of fur covering its body. Over the millennia, there have been wide and varied members of the rhino family. They have ranged from the size of a dog to a colossal giant standing 16 feet tall. Some have one horn, others have two, and some have none. But their evolutionary journey may yet be over. Researchers from Cambridge University have measured the horns of all five extant species from photographs taken over the last 100 years. In all five species, there is a significant reduction in their horn sizes over the past century. The team believes this physical change in rhino horn is due to excessive poaching. Those with the largest horns are huge targets for poachers. Rhino horns fetch a huge price on the black market and are still used in traditional medicine in China and Vietnam. The smaller horned rhinos that aren't hunted therefore survive and pass their small horn genes down to the next generation. From some of the most abundant species on the planet to some of the most critically endangered, rhinos have had an interesting and varied evolutionary history. 
and it would be incredible if we could keep these fascinating animals alive for future generations to enjoy. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time.